So uh, anybody here who does not know who I am, I'm Peter Wade, and um, I'm going to talk to you about organic chemistry in my laboratory. Uh, my uh, first uh, uh, slide here it describes a reaction that we uh, first observed about 12 years ago, uh, in which uh, we observed that if you take, whoops, the pointer is, uh, yes, pointer right here, yeah, okay. Um, if you take, oops, let's go back one more. And this is back, yeah. Um, okay, now we're there. Uh, if you take uh, an O-allyl nitronic ester, this is the structure right here, and uh, you warm it up, sometimes these actually go at room temperature, uh, you can convert it over to a gamma delta unsaturated nitro compound. Anyway, as I said, this is a new reaction we discovered about 12 years ago. We've been working with it ever since. The um, reaction is pretty close in nature to the aliphatic Claisen rearrangement, and that's a fairly significant synthetic reaction. Probably about one of the most uh, 20 top, most widely used reactions in synthesis. So again, this is a pretty good reaction. And uh, what I'd like to tell you about today is uh, where we have tried to extend this reaction into uh, other directions, and what happens when we try to extend it. So uh, when we try to extend it, we figured we might be able to make um, allyl nitrate esters, and they might undergo the rearrangement as well. So this is work that was. Uh, done by Nick Papadamas. He started this when he was an undergraduate. Uh, he worked on it when he was a graduate student. And he's still working on aspects of it even now. So anyway, uh, Nick took this uh, allylic alcohol and carried out a nitration. Uh, we used the procedure of Gabriel and company that was published back in 2005 uh, for the nitration reaction. And uh, we apparently do get the uh, allylic nitrate ester uh, but the tertiary ester rearranges to the primary ester, which of course is exactly what we wanted to see. Um, that was fine. Um, we've been investigating that particular reaction in more detail. But what I really want to tell you about is uh, an accident that happened, really. And uh, accidents are fairly common in organic chemistry. And sometimes they're very nice accidents. You could have an accident occur and uh, you get a lot of profit out of it. But that's what happens here. It's uh, serendipity. Uh, so uh, we take uh, the primary alcohol as a means of just making up the batch of this nitrate ester and carry out the nitration reaction on the primary alcohol. But instead of getting just the nitrate ester, what we got was a beta nitro acetone. That's the red portion of the structure right here. Uh, it's illustrated. Um, this is interesting because uh, the uh, double bond is reacting, and we hadn't expected that. Um, the uh, double bond actually is more reactive than the alcohol because it's very clear the double bond is reacting first and then the alcohol gets nitrated second because we can't take this nitrate ester and convert it into this product by just uh, submit, subjecting it to the nitration conditions. That doesn't work. So clearly alkenes are capable of undergoing nitration with this uh, uh, nitration system that we are looking at. and uh, We want to see what kind of reactions we could do and what we could do with the products. So, Turns out that alkenes, uh, we tried several open chain alkenes first, can be converted very nicely to the corresponding beta nitro sediments. Now, in this reaction, there's a nitration that takes place and then the solvent gets incorporated. That's what the mid portion here is, it's coming from the solvent. Uh, these reactions are really easy to run. Um, Nick's been running them, uh, Jenny Liao uh, has been running them this year. I even got my wife interested, and in she's a medical researcher, but she decided to do some organic chemistry. So she's been doing these reactions too. Uh, the uh, uh, second example here, uh, we changed the solvent uh, from acetonitrile to benzonitrile, and uh, we're making benzamids now instead of sedimids. Uh, that reaction is a bit low yield. We need to work on the yield, but we've only run a couple of versions of it so far. I'm pretty sure we can get the yield up a bit. Uh, the uh, conversion to beta nitro sedimids is not universal. Some alkenes, for instance, one uh, diphenyl ethene, will uh, nitrate but they don't incorporate the solvent and they wind up giving you nitroalkenes. Uh, so the reaction works well in some alkenes, but not all by any means. So what is the mechanism for this reaction anyway? Uh, the new reaction will certainly know what the pathway is it's followed to uh, get products. Uh, the pathway involves apparently a uh, um, active nitrating agent, uh, which is formed from the trichloroacetic hydride and lithium nitrate. Uh, the nitrate apparently attacks the 
triphosidine hydride gives us mixed anhydride, and uh, as I said, that's the active nitrating agent. The alkene then is uh, nitrated, uh, nitroglutamine is transferred to it. Uh, you get a carbocation, and uh, this reaction only works well if you have tertiary carbocations. Uh, so that means that you have to have alkenes with a couple of uh, alkyl groupings on one end. Um, if you have a uh, proton where the R grouping is, and uh, in the case where we had two panels here, that's where we get our nitroalkene from. Uh, you basically eliminate a proton and get nitroalkene. That's not the usual reaction. The usual reaction is for the solvent to attack the carbocation. And uh, this is uh, actually a version of the Ritter reaction, which is a pretty well-known organic reaction. Uh, the nitrile attacks the carbocation, you get a nitrillium ion. Nitrillium ion then normally in um, the reactions is converted to the uh, amid uh, by hydrolysis. But in that case, uh, sodium carbonate may be getting into the act before we add water. It's not quite clear how the hydrolysis is going on nitrillium ion in our case. But at any rate, uh, it's a pretty straightforward process uh, by which we're making these beta uh, nitro sediments. So the next thing we were interested in is uh, could we extend the reaction to other cases? And uh, we looked at uh, cyclic alkenes. The first one we looked at was metal cyclohexene. Uh, again, Nick was working on this initially. Um, uh, both Jenny and Lynn uh, really have gotten into the act and have done work on this uh, material too. So uh, let's get started. Uh, we got another surprise when we took metal cyclohexene. Instead of making a beta nitro sediment, we got a beta beta prime dinitro sediment, which we hadn't expected. Um, under our normal conditions, we use excess nitrating agent, a uh, couple equivalents, and uh, that's when we get the dinitro sediment. If we limit the amount of nitrating agent, uh, the reaction takes a different course. At 1.1 equivalents of nitration uh, uh, agents, we get a mixture of which the nitroalkene is predominant. Remember the nitroalkene we saw earlier? Well, there's another nitroalkene here. Plus, uh, we get a uh, one to one mixture of the mono nitro sediment, but none of the dye. Um, we've also been able to show that the nitroalkene is the source of the dinitro sediment up top. If you take this compound and you nitrate it further, it will be converted to the top product. Okay, um, there are very few studies on nitro sediments that have been done. Uh, compounds are really pretty much unknown. Uh, but uh, one study that came out in about uh, 2011, a couple of years ago, um, the workers, Kanchalan and Company, uh, observed that if you take silver nitrate and acetyl chloride in the nitrile, uh, this compound is converted to the same nitro emits that we got and the same nitroalkene that we got. Uh, but they report a 4 to 1 isomer ratio instead of a 1 to 1 isomer ratio. Uh, we're not quite sure the conditions they use. The paper is written in a way that it is not quite clear what they did. Um, but it appears they were heating at about 65 degrees in this reaction. Uh, we've done it, and this is uh, Lynn's work, at uh, about 0 to 15 degrees in that range. And then we observed that the major product is actually formed 9 to 1 excess over the minor one. Now, uh, Conchal did not work out the structures of the products. We have. Uh, these structures are based on... NOE studies and uh, the major isomers, the one where the nitro is cis to the methyl. Uh, we also did NOE to confirm the structure up top here, too, for the dinitro sediment. Okay, so that's uh, the uh, situation for methyl cyclohexane. Uh, methyl cyclopentane is a little bit different. Uh, here, it doesn't matter how much of uh, the nitrating agents you use. Uh, Neil Ryan, who ran these reactions, uh, found that uh, whatever conditions you use, pretty much, you get the mononitro sunamid, the only product. The yield's decent, 70%, and the isomer ratio is 2 to 1. Now, we've not identified yet the uh, major isomer here. Uh, I would guess probably the nitro is going to be cis to the methyl, uh, by analogy with the six membered ring, but uh, that's not certain yet. We need to do some NLE studies on these and haven't got there yet. But at any rate, uh, we're able to make a whole bunch of nitro sediments uh, by. Uh, the chemistry that we've been uh, looking at. Uh, we've also observed some other reactions along the way. Again, surprises seem to be coming out of this project uh, routinely. That's always fun. Uh, so anyway, if you take a conjugated diene, uh, you get a product that basically is a 1,4 addition product. 
Uh, it's also a uh, dinitro of sodium nitrotriptane. Uh, again, we're using excess uh, nitrating agents here. Um, the um, uh, reaction presumably starts the same way as usual, except that you get an allylic cation instead of a tertiary cation. We have an allylic cation being formed. The allylic cation apparently uh, reacts with a solvent at the end of the system. Uh, that's the one poor addition uh, reaction. And uh, apparently the uh, acetamide, which is initially formed, uh, the uh, proton is replaced by nitro. So we're nitrating the acetamide uh, to get an N-nitro, C-nitro product in the uh, uh, final stage. Um, well, if that's true, uh, you could expect that maybe, uh, well, well, why is this acetamide uh, nitrating? We didn't see that for any of the other uh, nitro sediments. Well, this one's more open than the other nitro sediments. All the other sediments are close to a whole bunch of other alkyl groupings. They're crowded. This guy's open. So maybe it has to do something with something uh, as simple as just having an open uh, sediment will uh, lead to nitration. So we examine a sediment itself. And yes, that will nitrate. Uh, and get uh, N nitro sediment in a good yield by that reaction. In fact, this is about as good a way of making N nitro sediment as, as, as you can come up with. Uh, the reagents are cheap and uh, uh, relatively uh, easy to handle. Um, this uh, second reaction, we said, well, if you can nitrate amides, maybe you can, you ought to be able to nitrate amines, too. That should actually be easier than nitrating amides. And sure enough, take pyrrolidine, you can convert pyrrolidine to n nitro -pyrrolidine. Um This is an interesting reaction because uh, there's a whole industry uh, making military explosives, um, RDX, HMX, the two big, uh, uh, major uh, uh, modern explosives are made by nitrating uh, cyclic amines. Uh, we haven't actually investigated that reaction uh, because uh, we're a little worried about uh, uh, phone calls. Uh, I can just envision my former graduate student, uh, uh, Steve Kotowicz, uh, who you may or may not know is an active FBI agent in New York City, uh, giving me a call and giving me a stern lecture about uh, what I was up to. At any rate, clearly we could nitrate amines and uh, this would be maybe to a better way of making high explosives. Uh, we got one more surprise. Uh, we wanted to nitrate one more amid. We took uh, an acetyl uh, amylin and we nitrated that. And uh, when we did, uh, we actually got ring nitration. Uh, the ortho nitro isomer is very predominant in this reaction. Normally, if you nitrate, uh, uh, acid analyte, you get uh, para as a major product, but not here. Here, the uh, major product, 3.61 to 1, a ratio, is uh, the ortho product. So again, it's a useful reaction and relatively good conditions for carrying out an aromatic nitration. We haven't looked any further at this reaction other than one example. Okay, uh, so we can make a whole bunch of beta nitro sediments, and I want to go back to that now, uh, plus other things, as we can see on these slides. Uh, going back to... Uh, uh, what we could do with these uh, beta nitro sediments, we do micro reactions. Um, micro reactions for nitro compounds are pretty standard reactions. We figured the uh, beta nitro amids would also do these micro reactions, and sure enough, they do. Uh, all you need is a uh, base, we use DBU, and a, uh, a micro acceptor. A micro acceptor has to have uh, an electron tracking group on it. And uh, we looked at a couple of standard micro acceptors. Uh, acrylonitrile, methyl acrylate, and they work well in this open chain case, and uh, you get about 50% yield of the product. Now, these are pretty heavily functionalized products, so they might be of some use. Uh, there aren't any natural products uh, that contain these structural elements in them, but unnatural products can sometimes be uh, very interesting, too. Uh, they're new. What they can do in the world, we don't know yet. Okay, So if you've done them, you uh, test their biological properties and uh, see what they might be good for. But anyway, we can make these relatively easily. And uh, again, the mechanism here is shown. I'll skip on quickly so I don't talk too long. Uh, but it's a pretty straightforward uh, Michael uh, reaction that we have going here. Of uh, particular interest was what happened with the cyclic uh, nitro sediments because uh, got a little bit of a surprise again as to uh, the nature of the products. Carried out Michael reactions on these, uh, again, standard Michael acceptors, and uh, we get products. But in the case of the uh, cyclohexyl, Microsetamid, we get only one diastereomer, only, 100%. And uh, that's unusual. Okay, usually uh, you get more than one product. 
So uh, I'll talk about why that is in a second. Uh, the uh, five-membered ring, the cyclophenol case, uh, is pretty good. Uh, we got a 97 to 3 diastereomer uh, ratio at worst <coughs> in the three cases that we've looked at. Uh, we're still working on the details in this reaction, but uh, it's coming along very nicely. Again, Neil has uh, had very good results with these, and Jenny's been uh, doing the uh, top reactions. So, um, again, why the one isomer? Well, we think it has to do with the nature of the nitro sediments, in particular hydrogen bonding possibilities. So here's a picture of uh, what the uh, intermediate nitronate might look like in terms of how it reacts with the um, microacceptor. Uh, the amid H, and uh, um, amids are known to be very good at hydrogen bonding, presumably hydrogen bonds to the nitronate oxygen, and again, a negative oxygen should hydrogen bond quite well. Uh, and uh, that basically makes a ring, it's an internal uh, cyclic hydrogen bonding. Uh, that, in turn, introduces rigidity so that this ring here no longer flips all that readily because it's tied up in a hydrogen bond over here. Uh, that keeps the molecule fixed in the conformation shown, uh, and it then can attack the uh, microacceptor, and in fact, this would lead to the observed product that we get uh, as the exclusive one in these reactions. There's only a similar uh, situation prevails with the five membered rings, but it maybe isn't quite as tight as we can see a little bit of the other uh, isomer. We're also going to do, uh, examine what happens in open chain series, uh, but we haven't done that yet. Okay, um, one last uh, uh, thing that we've done with the um, uh, beta nitro sediments that I'll tell you about. We've done a few other things that I haven't got time for, but this is probably worth mentioning. Uh, you can reduce the nitro groupings. Nitros don't occur in natural products uh, very often, so uh, amine groupings are uh, maybe more attractive to have in the final product. But it's pretty straightforward to take a nitro grouping, reduce it, and obtain an amine. So using a procedure developed by Gainham, uh, we uh, take nickel chloride, uh, sodium borohydride, and methanol, sonicate it. You need that to get the reaction of nickel chloride with the uh, chlorohydride. Uh, that makes nickel borohydride, and uh, that will reduce the nitro compound to the amine. Um, the amine here, the open chain amine, is not easily isolated. It's a bit, it's an oil, and it's a bit messy. But uh, if you convert it to the hydrochloride salt, you can get the product quite nicely. Uh, yields about 50 percent. Uh, the advantage of doing this reaction in the lower one, where we actually reduce both nitros and uh, get the uh, diamine acetamid, is that uh, you've got nitrogens where the uh, nature of the nitrogen is well defined. They're, they're unsymmetrical compounds. One is present as an amine or ammonium salt. The other one is a protected amine in the mid. So again, these might be useful um, in synthesis. Uh, they also might have some biological activity. I would suspect we uh, really need to test these compounds and see what they're good for. They're not natural. They're not particularly close to natural products, but they're very simple structures with common functional groups that should have some activity. So anyway, uh, this is the uh, last uh, slide I have to show you. Showing my group. Um, Nick started as an undergraduate, so he would have been down here back in the old days. But uh, he's now a former graduate student. He's got his degree, PhD. So now he's Dr. Nicholas. Um, the people here, um, that's Hannah. I haven't talked about Hannah's work. She's working on the uh, rearrangement chemistry. Okay, and we didn't have a chance to get into that today. Um, in the front row, Lynn and Jenny, uh, who've been doing all the nitro sediment work. Uh, and uh, Neil over here, uh, also pointing out where he comes from, too. I guess somebody missed that. Um, so anyway, these are uh, people working in my lab, and uh, we've had a good time, good year, uh, having fun uh, with these uh, uh, very nitro sediments. Okay, so uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention, and uh, basically, yeah.